I esteemed Nemo. I greet all of you on this joyous occasion of Christmas to the glory of God. Another Christmas season is here again. As always, it is this special and happy season that reminds us of God's everlasting covenant with the human race. That divine covenant made manifest by the special gift of His only begotten Son, Jesus Christ, the Savior of mankind, whose birth was foretold by the prophets. The scriptures describe the great essence of His coming as symbolizing God's gift of inestimable love to humanity. Therefore, Christmas should serve as a constant reminder to all of us that God indeed is love. And through the coming of Christ, God demonstrated his invaluable love for all humanity. As the scriptures tell us in John chapter 3 verse 16, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believes in him will have eternal life. It is true love and peace of Christ, which surpasses all understanding, that I stand to my beloved Nemo on this glorious occasion of the commemoration of the birth of our Lord Jesus Christ. I do so in the spirit of Christmas, Having in mind the words of Christ himself, it is my commandment that you love one another as I have loved you. This is written in the book of John 15 verse 12. So while I congratulate and rejoice with every emo Indian as resident for the divine privilege of witnessing another Christmas, I would like each and every one of us to reflect on this very important question in his or her mind. Have I loved my fellow human beings as Christ loved me? This is a pertinent question that all of us must answer to our consciences, knowing that Christ is watching us as we do. So Christmas is not just for the celebration and merrymaking of it. Instead, Christmas is a period of soberly reflect on the reason why Christ was born in the first place. The fleeting nature of life itself, the ephemeral nature of power, riches, beauty, and other earthly acquisitions should make us sober enough to appreciate God for his love and grace. For no fault of theirs, some of the people who celebrated Christmas with us last year are not alive this year to celebrate Christmas. And it is by the special grace and mercy of God we are all still alive. Therefore, this special love of God, which we are celebrating today, to serve as a wake-up call to all and sundry, to obey Christ's most important commandment to us, which is to love one another. Christ came for our redemption, and this redemptive work can only be accomplished by our professing Christ like love to one another. Never should we lay the essence of Christmas, which is the abiding love of God, to be lost on us. The abiding love of God for mankind should be our guiding principle as we celebrate Christmas. I have often wondered why those who profess to be Christians don't know the essence of Christmas. When we say Christmas signifies sense love, why then is it difficult for us to practice this love? in all its ramifications. In our relationship with God and our fellow human beings, it baffles me that many of those who engage in criminality in Nemo State and their sponsors claim to be Christians. Is the name a decorative one for them why their character is a direct opposite of what a Christian character should be? It is indeed regrettable that in the last couple of months, our dear state had witnessed what appeared to be a resurgence of bloodletting and arson, all in the quest for power. This is more regrettable because it is happening on the eve of Christmas, the season of love. 
both the perpetrators of violence and their sponsors may claim to be Christians. As their actions are reflective of love, they claim to be Christians, but they show no love to human beings. When some people engage in Peru party, siphoning millions of naira meant for the poor masses, do their actions reflect what we are celebrating today? Indeed, as we enjoy the redemptive work of God on us through the birth of Jesus Christ, we should also love to manifest in all that we do. This Christmas season is the good opportunity for the agents of darkness in the state to repent and turn a new leaf before it is too late. They must remember that God is watching them and that his vengeance on them is coming and will come sooner than they can even imagine. Let me also use the spirit of this season of Christmas to renew my plea to all those who have been unleashing violence in our state to retrace their steps and in accordance with the love of God give peace a chance so that we continue to enjoy the dividends of democracy. Like I said earlier, power is ephemeral. I won't be the governor forever. After me, another governor will come, but the most state will remain. If we are indeed Christians, our love for our state and our people should moderate our actions. I'm sure our people who have returned from other parts of the world have seen the difference we are making in Imo State in terms of provision of infrastructure, in spite of the security challenges which have been a constant drain on the resources of the state. I assure you that in keeping with the social contract which I entered into with my people in the Imo, we will continue to